Blog Talk Radio. It is Sunday, October 1st, 2017, and school is officially in. This is the Schools and Podcast. I am Mitch, as always, and I am joined by my two illustrious co-hosts, um, the Hip Hop You Don't Stop, Aaron. Hey, yo, what's up, y'all? <laughs> um, and the B-Boy Extraordinaire, kind of. And- I want to, y'all, and you know that. <laughs> 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 and um, we're all excited and giddy right now because this is the first in our element show. And, and we love the culture, so we love celebrating the culture. And this show is the DJ edition of the element show. So we're going to talk about the origins of hip hop and um, why we're doing the DJ first is because, as we said last week, if you were listening, that... Hip hop, right? Yep. Right. <laughs> um, one DJ in particular that we who that, say who that who that who that um who that would be DJ Cool Herc. <laughs> I know Grandmaster Flash. Grandmaster Flash doesn't take too kind of that. Grandmaster Flash did call some things into question, which we will talk about a little bit later. What did y'all think about that, by the way? I mean, if he contributed, he deserves credit. Well, we know that that, that he that Grandmaster uh, Flash contributed. There's no question about that. Uh-huh. But his claim is a little bit different. Like, like, well, he kind of basically said that he was the first one to figure out how to loop the rec, you know, like to loop the break together. Mm hmm. So that, um, you would have one continuous, like, long break. He was calling calling Hurt Sloppy, though. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> I mean, but it was, but but let's get it straight though. It was Herc's idea to only play the breaks though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Flash just figured okay. out how to do it. Well, he 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 figured out how to kind of you know um, Negro rig it <laughs> so, <laughs> to make it go the way you know to make it go that way. So. Let's let's first before we do anything else, let's define hip hop. Okay. Right. Um Hip is for what? intelligence, hop is for the movement. Where are you getting this from? <laughs> that's what Ab Soul Ab Soul said that. Yeah. What else would we say about about hip hop? How many elements? I say five, four, six. What's the sixth one? Double Dutch challenge, challenge. One, well, apparently, two, Double Dutch is the sixth <laughs> element. So, there are no. five elements to hip hop. Hip hop has, and hip hop is a culture, it's a movement. Please do not confuse hip hop slash the rap part or the music part as the entire culture. Okay, mm-hmm. that's the first thing you need to know. There's a hip hop, yeah. There's a hip hop DX video out there saying basketball is the fifth element. I'm like, they drunk. I just Depend think on- that, like, <laughs> like if you don't get the fuck out of here, they drunk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, depend on depend on who you talking to. Hip hop can have about 15 different elements. <laughs> well, Cool Herc actually said in the be- in the in the foreword to um, "Can't Stop, Won't Stop," the book 
that um he feels like hip hop has way more than just four or five elements, but the recognized elements that we know that we talk about are DJing, b boying, flash breaking. Do not ever call it break dancing. Stop that. <laughs> um, <laughs> the third is um, graphing or what they call um, graffiti art. The fourth is emceeing. And the fifth is knowledge. And the sixth that we were talking about, we're alluding to, is um, Double Dutch. At one time, Africa Bambata supposedly was on tour with some Double Dutchers. He had some I Double Dutchers on stage with him. Oh, you know. So I was like, whoa, that's, that's cool. But hip hop music, you know, hip hop, because, I mean, if you like look on Wikipedia or shit like that, They'll have you believe in, oh, you know, whatever. Yeah, it'll be like, you know, beatboxing. Beatboxing is the fifth element. Beatboxing is part of the hip-hop culture. It is not the fucking fifth element. Stop it. Yeah, but people, it's people, it's people that say that type of shit, though. I mean, it is a part. Like, just like other things are a part. It's sampling is a part of hip-hop. Yeah. You know, um, beatboxing is is a part of hip-hop. Um. What else? Is so I'm I'm glad we're talking about I'm, I'm glad we're talking about the elements elements right now because um I recently seen something uh where uh Flash was saying that graph art is not a um original element of hip hop. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, Anthony laughing. You know, I know you've seen that shit too. Why he say that though? Why he say that? Um, he was saying he was. Understand. I don't understand. Yeah, I know. See, I don't like that when the when the founders be like putting all these inconsistencies in the shit. But um, we saw it. We we watched Wild Style. We we all watched Wild Style. We we all right, seen but Star he was. Wars. Yeah, it, but he it. was saying, and this is why I got issues with Flash sometimes. Um, he was saying that uh, it was adopted from the punk culture. Um, it, and he may be correct that it was adopted from it, but it's a part of it. As, a, as, as, as I was just saying about Africa Bambada, there's a bunch of things that came from the outside that we brought in and adopted it. Because dudes have been b-boying for years, quote unquote. True. That shit is old. So we adopted, we co-opted that too. So what? Right. Hip hop is cop is a copy and paste art form. Uh, it's a little more than that. I don't like saying it like that, <laughs> but it is. It's a it's a conglomeration of a right. bunch of it's like, things. That it's we like throw in it's like yeah, it's basically it's basically it wouldn't be what it is. Like you couldn't just have like if it was just like you know breaking, um, or whatever, or like if it was just like all of this stuff separately isn't isn't what you would call hip hop. When you throw it together and you put it all in one, you right. know, place. Like when you start talking like about how, the drum breaks, when you start talking about funk, when you start talking about disco, you start talking about reggae, blues, jazz. You married because, like, originally at the, at the at the origin, jazz wasn't heavily incorporated into hip hop unless you're going to say that jazz was hip hop because funk was technically a derivative of jazz. Yeah. But that's a stretch. Yeah, it's the it's the way it's done though, like you said. Mm-hmm. So so let's talk about the the origins in the holy trinity. You know, we call and there's a bunch of trinities in hip hop. And Aaron always talks about the shit that survives on Mount Rushmore in hip hop. When like all the smoke blows over from that decade. It's like there's three that exist basically. And it's like mm-hmm. that almost every decade. Every decade is three that, that stand. And then and that's the three everybody remembers. And, well, you know, three or four. But it's usually three. Who are those so three right weird. now? I don't fucking... Well, I know two. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I know. Like, like Cole and, and Kendrick. Who's the third? Mm. I don't know. I want but to those who are, 
Who? What? Who? Primo. You talking about MCs or DJs? We talking about MCs, MCs right now. Oh, uh, well, MCs. The third will be, um, you got Cole, Kendrick, and people will say Big Sean. I've heard the Big Sean argument before. Yeah, people people put Big Sean up there. I don't, I don't see know. him seeing, I don't see him seeing the test of time, though. You don't? Uh, yeah, I agree. We'll see. I'm not going to go count out my Detroit homie right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, DJing is the very first element in hip-hop. And it is the first element because Cool Herc was the first one to start throwing these, um, quote-unquote, the very first hip-hop party. And where were those parties thrown at, Aunt? You remember? 1520 Sedgwick Avenue. Sedgwick Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> Aunt always wants us to make a pilgrimage. To, I want to go. I want to go. Sedgwick I want to do an episode from this. <laughs> Even if we got to do it from the street corner. Even we if we got to do it from the street corner. corner. <laughs> I'm, I'm down to do that shit. I'm cool. As long as we there, we can say we did it. So, so he started doing that. He was throwing these parties, and they were talking about how just epic these parties were. And at the time, a lot of the gangs, you know, and we talk about the Bronx at that time because this was the South Bronx that he was doing this in. It's, that's the reason why you hear people say hip hop is born out of the Bronx, out, out of the South Bronx in particular, because of Cool Herc. Now, were folks throwing parties? Yes, of course they were. Okay. What made Herc's parties hip-hop parties? I don't know if they were spray painting in the joint, but they had every other element present. <laughs> so, and, and that's what happened is, um, if you watch the hip-hop doc that we were talking about for homework last week, Hip-Hop Evolution, um, the very first installment, the foundation, they talk about, and it, it's on Netflix, by the way, they talk about how in the party, Cool Herc started making, setting his parties apart because he was only playing the breakdown in the middle of these funk records. He, he played funk records. There were other parties that were being played, you know, that had all disco. At that time, disco was what was popular. No. Like people weren't playing funk so much anymore. It was like the it was like the later mid to later seventies, and funk was it wasn't waning, but it was changing. And disco was being ushered in, and disco became ex- like extremely popular, and that's what everybody went to dance. Everybody in the whole world saw disco and was like, "Oh my god, it's so glamorous! New York is so wonderful!" And meanwhile, the Bronx was fucking on fire. Like all of the Bronx was burning. And anybody wants to, to, to look that up, there is a book and a documentary, I believe it's a documentary, and it's called The Bronx is Burning. It, just read that and look at the documentary. And it tells you how like the gangs, it was very political at the time. The lot of shit going on in the Bronx, like the projects, um, people were suffering, they were, you know, they were in poverty. And they were, it was, you know, the Bronx had a lot of gang infested areas. It was just, it was rough as shit. People didn't want to go there. They were scared. And Cool mm-hmm. Herc brought something to the Bronx that people could be happy about, could be, you know, excited about. So hip hop was born out of having despair. a way to express you. It was a, <laughs> I despair, but it was a way for you to express yourself other than a bunch of negative shit. Uh huh. Uh-huh. So, I mean, so he started playing the breaks. And then there were guys that came to dance at these parties and, like, in a circle. Like, we just mm-hmm. come in and challenge each other. And they would be, and they liked the breaks because that gave them a chance. And the breaks was that, that, that breakdown with a drum, with, with like, the, all the music would drop out. You know, and have that dancing. And that's that, where the that, beat comes drums. from. That's where the beat and, comes and from. That's where the break. That's where b boy. Yep, the beef from b boys comes from break. Um, so Cool Heart started doing that, and then it started to kind of catch on. 
Does he ever? Does the, he ever explain? Does he ever explain where he got that idea from? He does not. <laughs> he made At it this up. point, I don't. I, I'm just. I mean, who, who gives a shit? If he just made I it up, say, I'm glad you just made I'll, it up, Court. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say that. I want to say that it was um probably influenced by uh uh uh, uh reggae music. It may have been. Who Herc was? Um, he's, he's Caribbean. He's Caribbean. Don't never right. say that though. He's from the Caribbean originally. Yeah, he probably won't. He 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 old school DJ. He don't he don't cite influences they, in the records. They, and don't, like they that. do not reveal the sources. Good for you, Cool Herc. Mm. <laughs> they say hide your fucking records. Hide your records. Yeah. <laughs> I like the way oh, I like the way he hit the record. Yeah, I like the way he explained it too because a lot of people like it's a misconception that oh, uh, uh, DJs and stuff like they don't they don't reveal their records because they don't want to know they don't want they don't want uh, uh, people to know who they stole who they still in music from and all that. But the way he explained it is like they don't what's want the point other is, DJs. I, exactly, I don't want I don't want nobody else to uh know where my record came from because then what's the point in you coming to my party? If they got the same, right. if they have, you don't want the DJs to know what you have. It's, it really wasn't about because at that point, n- nobody was making records, so you weren't sampling. The only thing you had was you rhyming over these breaks or whatever, or like you know, like whatever loops you were doing, and they were those, those parties were being taped, and the tapes would circulate. Mm-hmm. Rhyming, that wasn't that wasn't even a question. That was that was one of the more interesting parts that I did see in the get down. That was uh, I was, when they, uh, I was gonna say the get down yeah. gets that gets that aesthetic right. Yeah, when they was like taping the when they tape uh Flash John and then uh <laughs> try to yeah, throw their own part. Yep, they got caught. Yeah. Mhm. Brown wasn't I even mean, the aim. Well, their DJ the their DJ didn't know that they did that. Remember after it happened. Their DJ was like, I'm a fucking, are you fucking crazy? What is wrong with y'all? Right. But I mean, they had a DJ, so it was like, why did you do that? <laughs> like, why would you do that dumb shit? Get your own fucking DJ and just throw the party. But so he felt like he wasn't ready yet. And, the, and the, if you watch the Get Down, the Get Down captures the early days of hip hop very well. It does, all of it is not historically accurate, but it gets the Trinity correct. Mm-hmm. It does. It starts out with Cool Herc and it moves on to our next, our next in the tri- um, trilogy, which we, um, it's a little bittersweet because of his many, many, many molestation accusations at this point. Oh. But wait, talking about him because he is. Integral to hip hop, unfortunately. Well, do they talk? Um, do they talk? Do they talk about um? Do they talk about him on uh Get Down? Oh yeah, he's he's prominently featured in the Get Down. Interesting, mm-hmm. I didn't know that. I only heard Africa about Africa Bambada. This about... who yeah. we're talking about, Africa Bambada, and I'm not gonna start making the horrible jokes everybody makes. He allegedly did those things. We don't know if he did or not because he hasn't been convicted. Um, but unfortunately, it looks like the evidence. The, all the mounting evidence, it makes it look like he did do these things. Um, it, it, there was there were a lot of male men that came forward to say that he, because what he what he did single handedly almost, and he himself was a black spade, was in a gang, African body, and he's in the on the east side of the Bronx. So you move from the south side of the Bronx to the east side of the Bronx. And Africa Bambada started doing the same thing that Cool Herc was doing. And but he, what he did was he organized all these gangs and he turned them into his his group, his organization, the Zulu Nation. And he convinced a bunch of gang members to stop being violent and you know killing people and to create this peaceful organization. And so you see in the get down and this happened in real life too, was like he created like safe zones where, you know, he was in charge. You couldn't come into these areas and be fighting and fucking people up. 
like you get sucked up messing around in his areas where there was safe zones. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I might hit to watch uh, those parts again. I didn't see all that in the get down. Well, um, I heard that in other in other documentaries. Yeah. I mean, I heard I, mean, I heard about all of that, but I didn't I didn't see them talking about all that in the get down. Yeah, all I heard about was did. like um, hurt and uh, of course uh, Flash more so. Which part of the get down did you watch? Because that was the second season. I think they started oh, that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's why you didn't mean. watch the second season. Yeah, I ain't getting into all of that. But, um, so, you know, so you have Africa Bambada. Now, Africa Bambada, what he did, and Aaron was talking about this earlier, and how he kind of don't doesn't like it for his personal reasons, and for reasons I understand. Africa Bambada switched off from strictly just playing these funk breaks to playing a lot of electro funk music from the 70s and like very early 80s from like Kraftwerk and Yellow Magic Orchestra and started integrating that into to the hip hop. So it, it, it gave it a, a sound. Like the hip hop became otherworldly. And like we love that shit. I, like, I remember hearing, you know, Planet Rock and um, the Soul Sonic Force records and just, like, that shit was, like, everything. Yeah. Like, the part um, of the fucking erupts when you put looking for, looking for a perfect beat on or, or Planet Rock on. Like, people would just go fucking crazy. Was, were they, were, um, was they body using, like, samplers, um, back then? You know what? That I don't know. Reason I ask is because like um I sometimes I listen to like those records and it sound it sound different. It sound a lot different than um the it way does. the way um records like the message and stuff is made. Like um I it think sound he like was definitely using equipment because the way he made like Planet Rock sound, that's not yeah. how the original craft work records sounded it exactly sounded it's not yeah because it when much you more slow down right because when you just playing another record over a break it's it, mm-hmm. it's not, it don't yeah it don't sound it that sound uh, like that mm-hmm. that orchestrated yeah it doesn't it doesn't sound that clean and that like i would dare to say he definitely was using equipment mm. that's that's so, that's kind of that's kind of funny don't you think why because like we don't really hear about samplers until like later on in the eighties. Mm-hmm. True. It wasn't a thing. It wasn't a thing. Mm-hmm. I, well, because they started recording um, hip hop, like they were using bands, like in the late seventies, like when Sylvia Robinson started with Sugar Hill Gang. They, they were using bands then. They right. weren't, you know, they they weren't using a whole bunch of sequencers and. <laughs> you know, like drum machines and shit. Yes, because they didn't feel like feel the need for that. They were like, okay, we're gonna get live drummers, like like you would normally get. You know, right, right. Yeah. For any other kind of band, you know, too. So the last one in our trinity is a different part of the Bronx. Is Grandmaster Flash of Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. And that's the reason why you will see these DJs, old school DJs, whose names come before the MCs. Everybody's like, well, why is Gassy Jeff's name first? <laughs> because the DJ was more important in the, in the origins. Like, the DJ was your conductor. You didn't right. do shit without the DJ. Like, Cool Herc's parties, those original elements... They were all represented there except for like graphing. So you had him conducting as the DJ. You had um, your boy Coke Rock on the side as an early MC. You had the breakers out there on the floor breaking. This one was like graph art, like, but they weren't gonna do that, like you know, while the party was going on, because that shit was done in the dark. I go to the subways and fucking, you know, do that, do that work. They didn't do that in the daylight. You got, you got caught. You got thrown in jail. 
by the mayor of New York and all the cops that wanted to throw you in jail. Yep, yep. <laughs> Very turbulent, turbulent time, turbulent time for color folks. Well, they didn't like, they didn't like graphing, but which we'll get into, you know, later. But so Grandmaster Flash is credited with actually improving on Cool Herc's way of looping that break. So he created the loop, and we we talked about that earlier before we got into the, to this, but he created that continuous movement from one record to the next. So you wouldn't have that um, that little or that sloppiness, as Aaron said. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's what he, that's basically what he said. <laughs> what he did, though. <laughs> <laughs> you, you wouldn't have that sloppiness of, of like trying to find where you, where the other part of the record where that you were trying to pick up on the other records. Yeah, Flash, Flash always try to make himself sound more like a scientist than a DJ. Like. He does. I, I think like he's some kind of alchemist. Some kind mm-hmm. of early alchemist. He does build himself that way, though, because he says, you know, he likes to tinker with shit. When he was at home, he liked to, like, take things apart and put them back together to see how they work. And, you know, which is cool, you know. So those are the, those are the origins, the early days, the early parts of hip hop and the DJ. The DJ takes a turn, though. After hip hop, and this is all before hip hop is being recorded on a mass mm. scale. Does this call for an impending doom? Um, sure. Let's let's impend. Impending doom, all the record companies. <laughs> because we always want to talk about when, like, when did hip hop die? That's always the question. Is hip hop dead? What killed it? Technically, it died its first death <laughs> when the shit got recorded. Yeah. That's when it started catching on, though. It did, but I mean, it, it, it can be looked at in a good or bad way. Like yeah. all the energy that you couldn't capture on a record. That's what was lost. Like, I mean, you can't replicate that magic. Lightning in a bottle. Lightning in a bottle. You can't really, you can't really catch it. That energy of those first shows and all those shows that happened back then before that shit started being recorded. You that's not the same. It right. wasn't even the same in my era and you know, our era was the golden era, it still wasn't the same. You know? It's fun it's so, funny we talk about like it's funny we talk about like the death of hip hop because like um watching that documentary I uh I noticed that it's always some type of resurgence in like the the origins and like the beginnings of things like once once a certain group or whatever get to a certain level of their uh popularity or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like for example, like um around the time when like they talk about uh Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five and Sugar Hill Gang and all that, like when they were when they were out there touring and everything and like them and being bothered and them like they were still like the Trinity. Yep. But they they started getting too ahead of themselves. So like by the time they got back to New York, like Run DMC was running things and like you know right, it was, yeah, like things had started to advance and they were like, Wait a minute, what the fuck? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And um a lot of times it just seemed like once once that you know once that fame start taking over and once you know you get to a place where it's like it's not about the 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 art or the craft of it anymore for you yeah it turned you know what i'm saying you come back and you realize that people that you know that want that old feeling back like russell simmons was saying that um yep. he wanted to get back he wanted to get back to the origin of the things origin. and that's why yeah. that's why well, that's why he made aaron explained 
explain what happened with like Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five and like Grandmaster Cast and all the old. Like, what did they do? To, like, well, they, like, how did they lose they, it? Yeah, they was basically like you know, they were out on tour because you know hip hop wasn't popular everywhere yet. So they were out on tour with people that was still popping, like you know the Earth, Wind, and Fires and. But um, what did they also they, do? Like, so because they weren't just out on tour though. They like they took on aesthetics that weren't exactly. But that's yeah, that's what I was getting to. Like they were okay. on tour with those people, so like they were influenced by like their styles and stuff like that. You know, mm-hmm. they were be they were being influenced mm-hmm. by the way they dressed. You know what I'm saying? The way they dressed and the way they the way they went they about very, performing. They were very flashy. Right, they yeah. Were, they, they they became flashy and flamboyant, and they started dressing like funk artists instead of being like they, they weren't they were dressed characters like hip hop. Yeah, they, they became characters caricatures, yeah. But they wanted to dress like people that they thought what were stars and what stars were supposed to look like. Exactly. In their mind, see, this was the the place where the the real hip hop aesthetic. The reason why. They call our era the golden era. Like when I was, I say in like middle school, like come out of elementary, going into middle school and high school is because we, we like we brought the actual aesthetics of hip hop forward. So, it so let me ask it was street. Straight, straight let up me ask street. You, what you see? A artist now coming out dressed like Ric Flair and the Ultimate Warrior and the... Oh, God. <laughs> How will we receive them? Yeah. Okay, so let's bring it further. <laughs> let's just pull it even further back. Like a, a Melly um, Mel. Yeah, that's not gonna... I yeah, mean, that's just, look at... Yeah, that's not look gonna at, no, but no, like there's a version of that what Anthony's talking about. Like, look at all these subsets what, of dudes who I don't mean, dress. They don't right? dress like like look people. at Paul <laughs> Bert walking around with this crazy shirt on. Like all this, yeah. there's this whole slew of dudes now that are out that don't look anything like hip hop artists. They, they, they that's, look that's like. What I was, see, but that's, that's what I was that's getting. Like, like they all got some yeah, kind of trademark. Like Uzi got the. I mean, Yachty got the the red braids and the bees, and right. Young Thug got the dresses, and they all got some kind of gimmick so today. Apparent, really but you have but yes, Young Thug has dresses. <laughs> but that's what I was getting. <laughs> that's the that's the that's the point I was trying to make though, because like um like we talked about with um with with Jay Z and the uh, 444 thing, like. Now we to a point where it's like, you know, all right, this is getting out of hand and we got to take shit back to basics. You know what I'm saying? And like, as mm-hmm. everybody knows, 444 is not my favorite Jay-Z album, but it's obvious that he had to take a step back and look at the situation. Like, all right, you know, like, you know, we got to, we got to bring, you know what I'm saying, shit back to the but bare bones. He didn't condemn it too much, though. He said even Tupac had a nose ring. But that yeah, is yeah, true. But that's not super far out away from the culture like that doesn't yeah. that doesn't really in the big scheme of things really stop anything he was still closer to the culture than he was far away from it you know what i mean uh-huh. um, yeah, i'm just saying we're gonna have somebody come so many old heads. i mean you have so many old heads now just yeah. all up in it not letting it rest but that's part of the reason it's because we didn't pull our shit right start trying to call it some crazy shit but I'm I'm starting to like that's why I brought that point up though because I'm starting to see more I'm starting to see more of that I think I talked about it off air too like we starting to see like people that's getting fed up I mean granted these are like people we would consider old heads but people getting fed up with they're like fed the, up. yeah they're fed up they're fed up with what the images nowadays so that they try to take it back like I see people running back and doing stuff with like one producer one DJ type of stuff you know what I'm saying you got Royce yep. and Preem and then um uh, yeah. uh smoke. Smoke Dizzle with Pete Rock and stuff like that, and you know, um, and and Forty Four, as you said, it's all right. one producer. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So it seemed like it seemed like every era, it seemed like everybody, you know, once they get too far out of hand, everybody is just like, hold up, hold up, we gotta, we gotta revive. No, yeah, you're right. It does happen because it's like, okay, what the fuck are y'all doing? 
This shit ain't right. hip-hop. <laughs> and all of us keep saying it. It's not just like it's one person. We say it on the show all the time. You see old heads saying it all the time. Like, like we keep going back to Cool G Rap talking about, you know, peekaboo. <laughs> <laughs> that, that shit is he's like you're only going to be entertained to the level of your own intellect in that Vlad, you know, interview. And then Vlad tells him after he said like who would what adult would be entertained by peekaboo and then he reveals to him that fucking little yachty has a song called peekaboo and he's like the fuck (laughs) because everybody is react reaction is the same it's like what the fuck have this has this shit going to yeah that's not hip-hop and we keep telling y'all this shit ain't hip-hop and y'all keep going what the fuck is well, the the well, artists themselves are saying it ain't hip hop. They're saying it ain't hip hop themselves. And if and, and if you're saying it's not hip, then call it something different. Disassociate right. yourself from our shit. Yeah, and go somewhere else with that shit. Like, don't get on a rap radio yes. station and, and sit there and talk about and and sit there and talk about how not hip hop you are. That shit pisses me off. Like, so are the rap too. stations that much to, as at? My, yeah, to blame. <laughs> that feels hard. Jeez. Disassociate <laughs> yourself from our shit completely. So I feel like okay. in a situation where where like a Uzi is saying my shit not rap, but he's still getting played on a rap station. Like, who do you blame in those situations? You blame everybody because we discussed <laughs> this before. The record company and the artist, you are writing off the back of our efforts. You are you you are pimping us. You're using us for our audience. We've already laid the foundation for this for decades. And you want to pimp that shit. Get your ass a, and I've told these two before my particular analogy that I use for this shit. When people like like when I saw um mm-hmm. telling old heads to ch- <laughs> shut the fuck up. No, you shut the fuck up. You don't tell you no one to be quiet. You, you be quiet. You're in my fucking house. Whose house? Our house. <laughs> we shut the fuck up. My generation built this shit. You don't go to your parents and tell them to get out of the house that they built. Go build your own fucking house. You want a house, go build one, but don't tell me how to run my house. As long as you're under my roof, you're going to follow my rules. You're going to follow my fucking rules. Nobody <laughs> walks up in, into R&B or jazz and starts telling, you know what? Get out, old head. Who the fuck would tell Taylor Bell to get the fuck out of R&B? They better not. They, I dare you. <laughs> Blasphemy. Anthony will be coming after you himself. Uh-huh. And you gonna catch a pie to the face. <laughs> we always we always we always patty pies. We always patty pies. <laughs> but I mean we didn't do that. We didn't we didn't go into jazz music, which was largely our parents. Um, you know, our parents did they were purveyors of bebop and modal and you know jazz. We didn't walk into their house and tell them to get the fuck. Yeah. That's disrespectful as shit. No, if you want to be in my house, you would like, even though you would see R&B being done in the A's in a different way, they were building off the foundation of R&B as it existed. There's rules to all this shit. There's different time signatures in hip hop. There's, well, not time signatures in hip hop, like in funk. There's different signatures. There's different signatures in R&B. There's the, everybody has differences, and we've discussed it on the show. Emphasize certain things, and music is what makes it what it is. Hip hop is about beats. Those break beats. Right. And it's about rhyme. The 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 problem we dealing with now, though, I think, is that. You got people that don't, they don't care what they're listening to and they don't want to know what they're listening to. I sent y'all the other day with somebody who was talking about how he hates instruments. 
Exactly. <laughs> I don't like. I don't... What? I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't like instruments. <laughs> he said, "Yeah, young boy said he don't like real instruments." I'm like, "What? I don't like How does that work?" What? <laughs> he only likes computerized sounding shit. What? I can't even wrap my. Exactly. I can't even begin. No, what? we can't because we are cousins. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. But we 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 have now produced a a a nation of actual angry robots. Oh, that's mm. weird. That's the beeps and the they clicks. Don't, they don't. The beeps and the clicks, man. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. They don't know shit about actual music because they've been fed this culture of like, oh, you just go over here. To this little beat machine or this little shit that's already been done for you by somebody else and you just grab some shit off that and and if this shit you know pops and it's hot we all want to sound like that that shit mm-hmm. was unheard of in our time period like cool herc was saying you hid your shit because you didn't want nobody else to sound like you nah not today not today this is what i did this is what i use this is where you get it that shit was about like, originality back in the day, though. It was, they got whole, they got, was that. They got whole beat sampling picks now. And that's what I'm talking about, Aaron. They don't want to sound the, like real instruments because they want to sound like the, beat packs. Which is disgusting. <laughs> which is disgusting to me because a lot of these producers, like, they get they sound <laughs> from another producer. So it's like what? Exactly. How you got? How you got your own sampling pack, your own sound pack, and you got your shit from somebody else? Like how they work? <laughs> you don't. It's not yours. Shit, <laughs> crazy. None of this shit is original anymore. It all, but but there, but as your boy Muir said, there's more diversity in hip hop now. Fuck out of here, man. He what the diversity? West. What diversity? Tell him put the mollies down. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. I used to Damn. like Murs a little bit too. I like some of his music, but he in the way. Damn. Murs hit a, that, hit that a, a sensitive crazy. nerve. He had a sensitive nerve. Oh, no. He's been hitting sensitive nerves. The last couple of <laughs> posts I saw him, that was yeah. like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Right. You the first, when he when when I first seen him, it, I thought it was like a fluke or something. I'm like, he trolling or something. I'm like, this some type of get Mm-mm. get him, get, get him, get him started type thing. And then next thing I know, it's like, it's like a, it turned into a one of those and now, how old is he, Aaron? How old is he? You oh, said a worm. That man, that man, thirty nine. <laughs> That's too old for you not to fucking. You know better, he, my dude. He the same age as Maul, the Joe Budden podcast. Yep. Yeah, look, <laughs> he is old enough to remember when they fucking played the message on the radio, dude. Mm. Mm. No, tell him about it, so. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, dude, no, no. <laughs> I can't. They gave, okay. him, they gave him a platform. They gave him a platform. I, I, everybody don't need one. Apparently. All right, let's go to lunch because I'm getting heated right now. I'm talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> Is Murray not the lunch? I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I was just going to say the same thing. I don't know. Let's, let's carry this on. Let's carry this on because I feel like there's more to be said. Okay. All right. No, nah, we talking about DJ. Let's keep it on track. Look here, Mars. We coming for your ass. We coming for your ass. We coming for your ass. When people who are supposed to know better say dumb shit, volume one. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we coming for his ass soon. It won't be on this particular podcast, but we 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 gonna come for him further. Bookmark him. Bookmark him. Bookmark him next to Joe Button. Today, oh please, Joe Button. (laughs) That motherfucker. (laughs) Anthony, I don't know how you listen to every day, struggle every day like that. Yeah, I don't know. At this point, it's a force of habit. 
That's what I do on my lunch break. Stop forcing that habit. I can't, I, I can't, I can't take it a lot of time. And then that stupid ass look on, you know who we about to talk about face. Okay. Wait, this, you talking about God? Yo, got it. I mean, no. Young Gotti? Yeah, sure, Irv sure, Gotti. yo, got it. Irv Gotti, I'm sorry, Irv Gotti. Sure, sure. Irv Gotti, Gotti is who we're Gotti. talking about. He had, he, he had a, uh, what's his name? Uh, Hannibal Lecter look on his face <laughs> during that interview. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is wrong with him? What is he? <laughs> that <laughs> creeped me out. <laughs> did you see that, Joe? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I did watch that. Oh, oh my God. What, what the hell is he doing? All right, so I don't want to spend too much time on this MF. I just set my timer for 10 minutes because we don't need to spend too much time on him. He looks like a clueless. I don't want to call him a bad name. He just—he looks like, he look like, like a blank, look like a blank slate. He looks it's like all the time, a, like huh? A blank slate. It's <laughs> <laughs> like an etch sketch. Like you just shake it and it's just blank. And you put something else on it and then you shake it again. Mr. Blank Slate face himself. DJ <laughs> Academic. DJ Academic. <laughs> Lord, Lord. Lord. The dumb shit and his he calls okay, so here's our biggest gripe. He has DJ at the front of his name. Like he's a DJ. <laughs> he is not a DJ in any form or fashion, shape, or sense that you know of in hip hop. He looked like he he looked he like he ain't got no records. He did a couple playlists. <laughs> playlists. <laughs> Playlist academic. <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> right? He get his he get his uh, he get his samples off of twenty eighth century master collections and shit. He the he the he the art scorer DJ. Oh Ari, oh my God, you just went the fuck in. I can't. <laughs> Like, you don't dig in crates, you just go online and pull up gold. Greatest hit, greatest <laughs> hit. You pull up the gold, Marvin Gaye gold. Oh, shit. Leonard Skinner gold. The best of the 80s gold. DJ best of. Uh, no, it's still a playlist. It's still a playlist. It ain't no DJ. It's not DJ. Like, he has he's like DJ Clue, I guess, but not even Clue level. <laughs> DJ, DJ, oh, that's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Clue, at least Clue actually is he actually DJ parties and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I mean, man. apparently DJ Academic DJ some college parties back in the day. I don't know. I don't. Rumor know. has it. Rumor has it. Allegedly. <laughs> according to uh according to uh, uh Bernice Burgos on the Breakfast Club, he uh he he Are we gonna take Bernice's to make... word for anything? He, he the uh DJ Clue uh he a bartender too. DJ Clue oh, a bartender? That's what she said. Bartending as he was DJ? She said he made drinks and shit. <laughs> oh, he, so he's, a, he's a mixologist apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Transforming Bacardi since '95 and shit. I don't know. The mix game, mixtape circuit must be kind of dead for DJ Clue to be mixing drink. Yeah, because he was the, yo DJ Clue. Yo, I had, I had, I used to have every DJ Clue uh, mixtape. How the fuck I he ended up bartending? I used to, I used to collect them. How the fuck he ended up bartending? I don't you know. According to Bernice, according according to Bernice Burgo, she was talking that shit. I don't know. You well, I used, to, I used to go to New York all the time and when I used to come back with all these mad DJ Clue types that I would get people would be like oh my god give me that shit and I'm like really? DJ Clue's running that for a while I guess he, yeah but I mean he had a name for himself you know in the streets like that yeah I mean at but least wasn't, was but wasn't K-Slade doing that first? K-Slade was doing it 
Yeah. Yeah. I feel like he was doing it first, but Clue was but popping question. though. I remember everybody question. had Clue. Yeah, everybody had Clue tape. But here's the question. What has DJ Academics done like that? No, not a damn thing. So the war in Chirac? Don't start me with that. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah, go way. full. I'm gonna I'm 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 go full no. Vic Mensa on your ass. I'm gonna go full Yo, Vic Mensa. If you watch Academics Twitch videos, the comments, like the chat niggas, is funny as shit, yo. <laughs> oh my god, they are just they- so. They, 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 just, they be on his jock like he, Even the ones that don't though, the ones like every people in there sneak this and the shit out academics. That should be mm-hmm. funny as shit though. It would be hilarious. But yeah, they do it see. but they do it in their mind out of love. See but he, <laughs> he, he 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 another one that like that's representative of what we dealing with in hip hop now, like these clowns is like what get promoted in hip hop now. Like back in the day you had to earn yeah. You absolutely did. You know what I'm yeah. yeah, you couldn't just you couldn't just come in the game and like you know. Just, yeah, catch just, me outside, curl. Yeah, yeah, that yeah that kind of stuff. Just roll up head. with a mic and be like, catch me outside. Yeah. Even even Rakim even Rakim say they they told him he was too small. He had to come back. He had to come back stronger. Cool. Um, hey. Yeah. Comes out. Take a hole in the little plug in our chat. And I jet back to the <laughs> yeah. lab without a mic to grab. To see, you know, I to, right. again, anybody, Aaron has did, talked about this shit, though. Your generation, unfortunately, is um known as the Participation Award generation. Yep. That's how, that's how it's going. I can't stand that idea. Well, you never are going to be good at anything if you never have to be. You yep. have to learn how to take a <laughs> take a L. That's nah. one thing. That's that's one thing I noticed about. How to take a L. That's one thing I noticed. That's one consistency I noticed about all the documentaries and stuff we was watching. Like, um, even people that like we got like high like we got high levels of respect for. Like they said, like they had to earn their spot. Like Chuck D on um I think it was yeah. the Art of Rap on the Art of Rap I was watching. He was saying they were saying like yo Melly Mel used to blow us out the frame and they was like well so. What happened? He was like, man, we had to get better. We had to get louder. We had to, you know what I'm saying? Every we had to, single we had to step one of them would game tell up. you that. Yeah, Big exactly. Daddy used to lose battles, and he'd be like, I had to just eat that shit, go back, work on it, come back and get better. Mm-hmm. Got to learn how to take an L. But if you, you don't, you don't, don't, you don't appreciate earning you, that W. You don't appreciate it. Yep. And that shit ain't a real W. Like, these kids out here now, they getting all these quote unquote W's. They ain't real W's. You ain't earn shit. You like yep. you whack. They just putting DJ next to the name. Your W is for whack. Your, your W is for whack. It is not for win. He said they just putting DJ next to the name. I think I named myself DJ Academics. Hey yo, <laughs> that shit is ridiculous. So that particular day when DJ Academics made that. Women rappers. When he did what? That day that he made that comment about women, when, when Joe Button was talking about the resurrected feud between mm-hmm. Jay and how Cameron kind of made a little something or something that he, you know, did because he thought he was getting a subliminal diss from, you know, Jay on 444. Right. And they were like, "Well, do you want another, you know, beef? The beef that we already saw go down like a decade ago or whatever." And right. um, he started talking about how he gets, you know, um, for um, sin, his girl, his baby mama, mm-hmm. you know, his mm-hmm. pregnant. And he started talking about, and the academics was like, "Well, if you write those lyrics, they're gonna be, um, they're gonna be." Overly um, lyrical. He's like an over, overly lyrical female. He was like, "That's not gonna sound right." Yo. Woo! Yeah, and then then Joe said, "Of course, I dumb it down." <laughs> I, uh, what? Yo. <laughs> I didn't see that one. What the fuck? I told you about that, Aaron. I told y'all about Damn. that. I was like, I was so fucking mad. I was pacing. That's so disrespectful, especially because that was like while I was waiting for Rhapsody, John, among you other people. You don't get the Rhapsody will 
wrap you up in a hip-hop Why is everybody so surprised at Mikey how series. good Layla's wisdom is? <sighs> Everybody's like, oh my God, where did this come from? Where the fuck y'all been? <laughs> and right. Joe is a battle MC. Joe has seen female battle MCs that will fucking eat you and spit you out. What the fuck is he talking yeah. about? Well, you know what it is, too? It's like, you got people nowadays. Like, people just pasting shit next to whatever now. Like, people, like, that lyrical thing. Like, for mm-hmm. somebody, people just people just use the word lyrical because a motherfucker used a lot of words and shit nowadays. It don't really, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, don't really, it don't really mean, it don't really mean what it used they to. They don't even like, know what lyrical even means. Right, right. Like, like my man Mo say, like, shout out to Mo. Um... He was saying, you know, they dictionary rappers. Like, people just using a lot of words and, you know what I'm saying, a bunch of big words and shit. And people are calling it lyrical. So, like, what, like, whatever, whatever, whatever DJ academics, like, considers, like, overly lyrical or whatever the case may be. It's just like, dude, you don't even know what the fuck you talking about anyway. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But the fact, the fact that Joe Button is condoning that. That And he didn't check him. That's what my issue was. Dude, seriously? That's Why crazy. Why that shit go on check? Why that shit go on check? <laughs> we, we expect DJ Academics, or sorry, DJ Wackademics. Playlist Wackademics. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we expect Playlist Wackademics to say dumbass shit like that because we know he ain't fucking other culture. We know that. Yeah. No. No, come on. Man. I don't know. I feel like Joe needs to get back on drugs or some shit. He ain't the same. Stop that. Stop it. Stop. Yeah. He ain't the same. Oh, man. No, 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 no. <laughs> he, talk, he fucking told Chance to get on get on drugs or catch a case because he sounds too active. I don't get what everybody liked about that episode. Yeah, apparently uh, Joe got something. That, Joe got something that gets a lot of like positive energy and rap right now. That's because he's depressed as shit. He always been <laughs> he was, depressed as shit. Because he was talking shit. He was talking shit about logic too. Yeah, I don't, yeah. You know what? I think it is Aaron and Ant. I'm gonna say I think because remember how I was talking the other week about how I listened to to um I listened to. Arrested Development now, and I'm like, oh, okay, speech is a little bit pretentious and preaching. I think that that's what Joe sees. I think uh-huh. he sees that as, like, he sees Chance as really pretentious and preachy. You know what? I'd rather have that than this bottom feeder bullshit. You'd rather have that than bad and bougie? Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather have so many things. <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, <laughs> look, look here, Aaron. I like my crock pot the way it is. My crock pot <laughs> is for food. It's <laughs> my crock pot. Crack just ruins your crock pot. Okay, I, I want to yeah, tell sure, everybody I'm that sure out there right now. If you put that's, crack in your crock pot, <laughs> let's hope we. Let's hope none of us ever get into a position bad enough where we have to start putting that other stuff inside the crock pot. No. Well, you have to get two crock pots, but I feel like you would mix up <laughs> your crock pots if they weren't very different. If you didn't mark one crack. You this know, the you crock, crock pot. This the crack pot. Of them. This is the, you, because yeah. then you would mix them up and you, then you would be eating crack residue in your food. That, I mean, you can't have that. <laughs> That's back up for anybody. And then if the, the cops come in and raid you, you have two crock pots and one of them says crack on it. And the other yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can just feed the feed the officer out of one of them. Like here you go. Well, no, this he's is all gonna I'm doing. See that. He, he's gonna see that and be like, "Why does this crock pot have a label that says crack on it?" <laughs> that you that you made with your label maker P two two thousand. Why did you do that? Uh, yeah. Now I can take this crock pot and test it for crack residue, and now there's crack in it, and you're going to jail. Oh me. Okay. Well, there you go. There you go. That's a very Um, depressing uh, situation. (laughs) Look, just don't don't put crack in your crock pot. Don't put crack anywhere. Don't cook it. Just go do something else. (laughs) But (laughs) but 
But no, uh, as far as like uh, the negative energy or the positive energy in hip hop, yeah. I've noticed. I've noticed with a lot of older MCs, like they miss that grimy era. Era. They miss that. You know that that dark, dangerous era of hip hop. Like where you know what I'm saying anything can happen. Anybody might say anything out their mouth, and I feel like that's what um, Joe talking about more. So like you don't have that anymore. You know yeah, what I'm saying? He wants, the, he wants the the mob beat and the right. Yeah, the everybody wants that. Everybody wants that feeling back <laughs> for some reason. Like, I mean, you know. I mean, you're not really getting it. People think, these kids think they're getting it with, like, say, Future or, um, like, Uzi and these other crazy people that talk all this crazy stuff out of their face. But right, it's not the same energy. It's got to. It's so watered really down. It's so got to. But it's not even that. It's, it's, it's just bad. Yeah. They want that shit to be lit. Like, just because I want to hear some dark shit doesn't mean I don't want it to be substantial. Well, mm-hmm. in their in their defense, I will say, Mama rapping on purpose is hard. <laughs> I tried it. <laughs> Mama rapping on no, purpose is it's hard. It's hard for you. It's hard for you. <laughs> that's that's definitely nominate that. It's hard that, for that you takes- and. That takes a special kind of something to be able no, to move around. You, it, it takes something else. <laughs> I'm going to say ain't that. Got it. Every, well, no, but do you want to get it? Is what I'm saying. No. You don't even want that. No. no. Nah. I think you're just, again, as I always say, I think you're vibrating too high for that. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I think we all should be. All right, let's come back from lunch because I'm done with DJ Academics. Playlist Wackademics. Playlist Wackademics. <laughs> Your DJ ain't no DJ. Your DJ ain't no... Where they do that at? <laughs> that's funny as shit, Air started singing. I was just thinking that. So that's, that was um Big Boy, right? Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Yep, that was Big Boy on the Sir um Sir Lucius Left Foot album. He has a um, yes. album. I love that song album. About that. I do too. I don't care if anybody say I love that album. So um, so um, let's talk briefly about this. Just real briefly. So the disco DJs that were playing music at at the time that hip hop was like beginning a lot of people including some of those disco DJs like DJ Hollywood are trying to claim the DJ element of hip hop Mm. yeah that yeah they were talking about that they were talking about how all of a sudden they want to claim hip hop and they were the ones rejecting it at the time Mm-hmm. Well, and let's talk about why. So, the reason why they cannot be the creators of the DJ element in hip hop is because hip hop is the break. That's what okay. makes hip hop hip hop. Is mm-hmm. the fact that Cool Hurt was playing the break. And that's what the B-Boys and the Breakers would break to. And the hip-hop, the DJ, um, the the disco DJs would not let these guys into their parties because, A, they wouldn't be dressed up to the nines the way they would uptown, uptown of Harlem, for those who don't know. Right. Um, And or, like, just Manhattan, period. They didn't want you because they thought that, you know, People that, that know New York know that Harlemites are, have always been flashy and, mm-hmm. you know, they're very into clothing. And, so, you're from the Bronx, you, like, you weren't on their level as far as they're concerned. Like, you know, you come in here with your beat down clothes on and you're not coming in our party looking like that. You're not coming in our party taking over our dance floor with all that shit you doing. Right, right. <laughs> you know. So if you reject the breaks and the breakers, how can you claim hip hop? That's what hip hop is. That's the mm-hmm. that's the that's the origin. The foundation. That's the foundation. 
Well, you know how that go, you know. Hip hop, hip hop making money now, so now, now and it's that's okay the to be. And why they want. And so now I it's okay always to be say a part that of analogy it. is like, it's like your long lost father walking up, because disco does have a part in hip hop too. But you know, your long lost dad coming back talking about, I created you, and you, no, not really. <laughs> you, you ain't want me. You left my mama. The Bronx came in and married <laughs> kept me for everything I had and, and showed me how to live. And showed me, you know, how to get down. The Bronx is my daddy. It's like, it's like Reggie, Reggie on Ballers. <laughs> you don't get to be that. my daddy, disco DJ. Uh-huh. You're not my daddy. <laughs> That sounds like a that's not like a song. You don't get to be my daddy disco DJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I dare you. I dare you. <laughs> I, 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 I would love that song. I swear you should do that, Air. You should do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's in the air. So, the then, air. <laughs> so then you have my era. You know, you usher in my era, and we were talking about this off air. In my time period, you have the um, what you have because New York DJs started it, Philadelphia DJs perfected it, which we will talk a little bit about during recess. And so, a lot of the the DJs that you heard like doing some of the first things, like more competition wise, like transforming and especially transforming and doing like a lot of heavy and cutting and scratching that shit actually was done in Philly not New York that was new that was new to me not saying that no New York DJs did did it because there were a few but Philly was perfecting DJing during like my time period like after the the um, old school era was coming to an end and the golden era was beginning Right. Round of applause for my city. Round of applause. Of course. <laughs> so you don't still have so you well yeah, <laughs> but I mean you have DJs like those who we know, like Jazzy Jeff, um, and Cash Money, who um they both have groups that they were their name was the first part of, so you, you know, it's different the first print. Cash Money and Marvelous, like they were, they were still DJing in the in the spirit of what hip hop was in its origins. But for the most part, as soon as the record started coming out, the record companies, when they don't understand what it is that the person does, like they started phasing the DJ out, and the like the DJ was just almost non-existent. And in my day during the golden era, your DJ was more aesthetic than anything. He was sitting up there, you know, and you, you called him your DJ. Mm. He was, he was, on the, he was on the front of the album cover. Yep. He was all up in the video. <laughs> oh, Lord. I mean, he may have been, you know, up there doing like, but, but you started phasing into the this DJ as producer era. You know, where the track that you were on was now produced by. DJ and Khaled? we'll call him, well, uh, oh my God. <laughs> we'll call him, we'll call him Beat Maker. You know, you had a producer will, slash Beat will, Maker, maybe. like. So, we no, were, we're, like, like we're, Marley Barrow. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that. Like, we're, we're, um, <laughs> Where do Marley Marl fall in it? He was, I, then, I always said I'm a producer. He was, he was one of them. Like, he was one but, that was like that. But he was a DJ, DJ, too, though. I know, I know. And he was both. I, but he didn't mm-hmm. have to be your DJ. Like, we were just talking about before, like, when Big Daddy was, was performing and he was up there, Mr. C was, was back, you know, behind him. But who produced the track? Did Mr. Mm. C do it? Or did Marley Marl do it? Or did Biz do it? Or did some Like, who did it? Right, right, it I got you. you know, it's happening 
where the DJ wasn't in that same role as they have been. They weren't your DJ wasn't your conductor anymore. Because we committed this shit to wax. We ab- mm-hmm. it. Yeah. You know. So I mean you still had some of that original flavor here and there, but that shit was it was dying out. By the time you hit the end of the um what we call what I call the platinum era, which is basically like the, the era of the you know, the um commercial era of hip hop, the beginnings of the commercial era, your DJ was gone. And it was all producers. You barely saw a DJ. Unless you had a group that started out with a DJ. Like. Gangstar. Mm-hmm. Primo. Primo's always going to be there. <laughs> you yeah. Know. Primo ain't going nowhere. Yeah. So. Well, what about people like Flex? Funk Flex? See. He was. Funk Flex was more like an actual DJ. Like. He played records on the radio DJ. Yeah, radio DJs are different. He was kind of like Clue. And then, but then he was like Clue, too. Kind of, sort of. A little bit. But he would be at the tunnel DJing parties. Yeah. You know. But like, they, you know. but they, but their version of DJ is different, too. Like, their job more yeah. so was um just that part of DJ where it was just to spinning. find, yeah, just spinning and finding it and finding what, whatever the hottest finding whatever the hottest record was at that time. Like more of an actual disc jockey. Right. Yeah. But I mean, it kind of was sad a little bit. Because I got disillusioned with hip hop really like right after the commercial era kicked in because because it was like all the, the the very close aesthetics that we were still trying to maintain in that time period, like were just they were gone. You didn't see it anymore, you know, as much. And that was when people started kind of figuring out. Oh wait a minute, that person was never really like. Wait a minute, I thought. But, but your DJ is um, Ali Shaheed Muhammad. Well, yeah, the tracks are being produced by Q-Tip, and they always were. Oops. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh. <laughs> Not saying Ali Shaheed didn't ever, didn't ever do anything, but we know now that most of that production was done by Q-Tip. Most of it. Or like in De La Soul, you know... As, as I was saying, Maceo was up there, but Prince Paul and Pasta News, they did the production. So you were like, wait a minute, the rapper is the producer? It, like, it was confusing. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was basically, it was basically them just, like, creating the illusion that, yeah, this is still happening yes. this way. <laughs> yep. It's still happening this way, but not, kind of, sort of, not really. Kind of, sort of, not really, but no. Yeah. Yeah. It was just a yeah. way to, you know, kind of keep, kind of like, just like, okay, EPMD, same thing. They had um, the boss, but who produced those tracks mostly? Right. Eric Herman. I mean, definitely Eric and and partially Parrish. Again, the rappers were like so many cases where you dig through, you you find out that the rapper was actually the one producing the track. Well, that's a that's a that's a case of everybody being able to get a hold of samplers and stuff too. True technology, technology. Mm-hmm. And like so, I said, like the transition, the transition from the live party to record is is a little bit different. So like you can you can tell you can tell the listener anything. <laughs> But you know what? I do like that they talked about Marley Marl. Did they talk about Marley Marl's like really important contribution in in the, in the foundation, or is it in the next one that they talk about it? I think the in one the after one. the foundation. Yeah, because he did something really really important. 
which I think we'll probably talk more about when we talk about that kind of kicked everything off right there he like the way he looked at things and the way he programmed his drums were very different like people mm-hmm. weren't really doing what he was doing and that kind of kicked off a whole next level of things and well, and it kinda, well people well people didn't realize you could do that at the time I don't think And that kind of brought us out of like the Run DMC, you know, like right, very r- rapping, rapping over stock drums and stuff. Yeah, it's like, wait a minute, is this shit right into this thing? Oh, okay, alrighty, uh, let's do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and for everybody who, again, who doesn't know. The origins are funk drum breaks. So these are all funk drums we're talking about. It was it was funk drums and drums that came from soul music, funk music, and very, very rarely sometimes disco, but mostly funk mm-hmm. and old soul. And they're very well known now. These like like Everybody at this point knows Clyde Subblefield, may he rest in peace. The funky drummer it was one of the ones that we sold a lot. Yeah, they was talking. They was like playing that on a uh, on a uh, uh, that copyright criminal John. They was playing like yeah. all the song, all the songs that used that. Like, and it's funny because like if you listen to those songs, like you don't really think about it. <laughs> nope. Like they, it was a Roxanne Shante song and um, LL Cool J's "Mama Said Knock You Out." They used the same drum. There are a zillion hip hop songs that use funky drummers. Right. There's so many you can't even fucking fathom. Mhm. That's why. That's why to me, Lynch like I thought it, it was, it was funny to me, like how um everybody was like so up in arms and oh Pharrell used a Marvin Gaye's uh record and it was, and I'm sitting there thinking to myself like you know how many people that use that shit already and they just like <laughs> they just did it better well, so you didn't know. Not- not we accept that that aesthetic for hip hop, right? Yeah. But when you try to carry it over, but people don't realize how far reaching that's gotten now. Like we've, you know, had those kind of, those talks on the show too before, where like sampling is everywhere and everything now. Even country music it doesn't even matter. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. you know, that's nuts. Like really, 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 really nuts. But um, yeah, now we don't have any, like, name an actual real DJ. <laughs> I don't think we, uh, there's not, you know. I mean, we I, still got Primo, obviously. Jazz Jeff. We still have you Jazz Jeff. We still have Marley Marl. You, you mean know, like Marley a real? Marl, Marley Marl is married to the ramen noodle heiress. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> How'd that happen? He never, he, 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 look it up, I'm telling you. He never has to work again, this man, if he didn't want to. <laughs> Yo, you married to the ramen noodle era, dog. I ate those drones like a couple of days ago. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely keep the black community alive. <laughs> Shout out to to Marley Marl and the Ramen New <laughs> That shit is nuts. Like, but that shit is crazy though. Like, who are you gonna say, Aaron? Um, no, I was gonna ask. Um, are we talking about like just strictly like um like hip hop music DJs, or are we talking about like um? DJs in general, like, if we, are we talking about like hip-hop art, music, like, hip-hop like radio, music. like we talking about radio DJs, because there's radio nah, DJs hip-hop. that still exist. Yeah, hip hop, hip hop mm. DJs, like, like DJ like, DJs, like, like, like diamond cuts. <laughs> why do you continuously do this? <laughs> <laughs> why not? Why not diamond cuts? <laughs> yeah, she another. I mean, I don't hate diamond cuts, but she another playlister, I think. So. Yeah. 
That is not it. a hip hop DJ. The way that we have explained that hip hop DJs are. That's I mean, not. at least at least she played music. What the hell do DJ academics do? Playlist wack Playlist. academics. Playlist wack academics. <laughs> 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 That shit is gonna be funny forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh I mean, hey, you got the war in Chirac. You got his little Twitch page. Oh, you just gotta have it. You, you just gotta have a YouTube page to be a DJ. You gotta have. You gotta have an internet presence. An internet presence. Oh God. Like okay. I can see. I can, he ain't even got no mixtapes <laughs> under his name or nothing. Like I'm just like, <laughs> no, nothing that you know about, nothing that you know about. <laughs> oh my goodness. No, none that anybody. <laughs> Nobody, nothing, none that anybody want to know about. Okay, so um, <laughs> that's that's the end of um second period, and we're gonna do something funky today on recess. Um So we're going to try I'm going to try to get in as many as possible. I'm going to shout out all the Philly DJs that I can. Shibuya roll call. To boy a rock, I'm doing old school. It's gonna be only old school. <laughs> <laughs> and and then we'll talk about a little bit more in depth about DJ Cash Money and Jazzy Jeff, obviously, because those are the ones that kind of have floated to the top and kind of stayed there that we know. Mm-hmm. So um so just a real quick rundown. Um Tap Money. Okay. Talk about Tap Money a little bit in a in a bit too. And you guys should know who Tat Money is. Tat Money was Kwame's old DJ. Okay. Um, he used to have that weird funky Gumby cut and um only you video. <laughs> um Yeah, that grand, was a, that was a thing. It's a classic right there. The Grand Dragon K D and he's um the first to transform on record. Okay. Um, Master Vic, aka Victor Duplex. Um, who he actually came in second in a national DJ reality show on um I guess to came second to DJ Scratch. Um Chucky Gogo, rest in peace. And Chucky Gogo actually was the one who used to go around taping all the Philly parties and shows so we have all this shit documented, otherwise we wouldn't even fucking know about it. Mm-hmm. Cosmic yeah. Kev. Most folks know who Cosmic Kev is, and that, that's one that um, Aaron talked about. Um, he was one of the first Philly DJs doing hip hop in Philly. And let's see, um, one of the white DJs that was doing it before, almost before any other white DJ was was out there. His name is um, Detonator Too Tough from the Too Tough Crew. The grandson of R. Blakey. So there you go. There's some trivia. Um, mm-hmm. Who and he's the one who taught Cash money. Wow. Who then subsequently taught Jeff. Interesting. Uh, yep. DJ Sinbad. He's one of the youngest ones. Like who actually said that they've heard him the first be the first one to transform. Mm. Like not that you caught it on you know re- record, but he was one of the first ones to do it. Right. And that people have actually have said you know word of mouth. Um, Grandmaster Nell, who was actually Meek Mill's uncle. Hmm. Go figure. <laughs> um, where's the so 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 why the whackness, Meek Mill? Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> Handmaster Slash from B Force. Um, MC Breeze, Breeze's DJs, and um, Sporty, sorry, Sporty Shorty, um, who Cash taught him. Sorry, her, the girl. Hmm. Um, Cash 
Cash taught her, and she debuted, debuted at 11 years old at a Cash and Jeff party. Nice. And Sporty Shorty went on to be um, Yvette Money's DJ. So all these are like mid, mid, early to mid 80s. And they're all, they're like contemporaries of Jeff and Cash. They're all like kind of at the same time, happen like the same time Jeff and Cash are happening. Mm, okay. Um, let's see. DJ Miz. Let's see. DJ Ghetto. Uh, let's see. Um, DJ Evil Tracy. DJ Razor Raymond. DJ Rich Medina. Now, everybody, people know him. He was a New Yorker, but he got famous kind of from hanging out in Philly. Making his name there. And there's a few other DJs um, that are a little bit lesser known. But that is a rundown yeah. of a lot of the DJs that were kind of like around the time they were contemporaries of Jeff. Everybody knows DJ Jazzy Jeff. Right. And um, DJ Cash Money. It's, it's hard to find some of the names you did mention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that's my point about documenting this shit because the reason why we do this show and the reason why we're doing these types of shows is because we have fallen so far from the actual origin. Like, look at what hip-hop was born out of and look look at the reason why it was born. And look at what's happening now. Right. Like, people are trying to crawl into the gutter. We were trying to crawl, crawl out. You know, we were trying to rise above the gutter. They're trying to go in it. Yeah. Uh 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 uh. No 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 no. Backwards, backwards. Mm, but that means that means regression. Mm. Backwards means regressing. We're not trying to regress. We're trying to move forward. Regression means you're not growing or changing. Yeah. Well, another another thing is like you know we got people that like they they just want to forget the past for some reason. We're not acknowledge it. Yeah, at all. Like it's I, I guarantee you it's a bunch of people from Philly that don't even know. Like you mentioned the Tough Crew. It's a bunch of people from Philly don't even know who that is. Yeah. Nope. Like that's crazy. <laughs> the, no, the two, like as soon as I got to Philly, when I first moved to Philly, that's the first thing I learned about almost. I went to a party, Aaron. They started playing that shit. And everybody fucking in there was going ballistic. I was like, what are y'all? What is this? <laughs> and everybody was like, you don't fucking know what this is? It's like, I am not from Philly. No, I do not. But I mean, they hit me to it. You know. Yeah. But yeah, like you know, like all you gotta do, and this uh, the the other issue is that like a lot of old heads don't like pass that stuff down either. Like you don't, unless no. you're talking, unless you're talking to somebody that came up in that era. Like you don't. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not su- I'm not surprised somebody my age or younger don't know who the tough crew is. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, yeah, or who Kwame is and stuff like that. So it, it's that's I mean, well, folks that really know who Kwame that. is, you know. That's, that's not, our fault, though. That's our fault, though. For not pumping that, not bumping that, not spreading word. Yeah, that's true. But that's why we're doing this show. Yeah, props to us. Yeah. <laughs> because because we feel you know, <laughs> we just we feel the need to to fill in the gap. Of what's sometimes not even filling in the gap, filling in the large gaping hole yeah. that these idiots are creating. <laughs> that's exactly that's, exactly that's exactly what it is. <laughs> but so so those who who those two DJs kind of emerged as the most prolific 
DJ Cash Money, whose name is actually Jerome Hewlett. Um, I was telling Ant earlier last week that even in Detroit, like Cash Money and Marvelous, there was this one song called All the Ugly People Be Quiet that was so freaking popular because of the shit that DJ Cash Money did on that record. Like, he did a lot of different, you know, um, DJ techniques on it. And they used to, the DJs in Detroit used to just cut and scratch and transform the shit out of that song. Like, it was so popular. It, it was, of course, it was underground. You know, that, yeah. that shit wasn't... Like, there was no such thing as mainstream hip-hop, really, at that point. Right. Like, we hadn't even gotten to the point where Young To Be Rap was on yet. Mm. Wow. That was, like, 87. Yeah, that was, like, 87, 88. <laughs> I was, like, in 7th, 8th grade when that was going on. You know. Hip-hop was still novelty, but, I mean, you could recognize what the fuck, you know, Cash could do. Um, so he and Jazzy both kind of came up together and they shared like a friendly rivalry. Mm-hmm. So they would do parties together sometimes. Um, and... Safe to say Jazzy won. Hmm? Did it safe to say Jazzy won that little rivalry? Did it say Jazzy won? I don't know. But, <laughs> but... It, um, Cash Money, he he did perfect the transform scratch along with Jazzy Jeff. They both kind of did it together. Jeff, Jeff is always credited with it, but we don't know that he came up with it. In fact, he probably did not invent transforming. He may have just he and and he, Cash uh, he, just kind of perfected he, he, it. Yeah, he Grandmaster Flashed it. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's funny. You know what's funny too? I used to always say this about. Oh, by the way, "Ugly People Be Quiet" was co-produced by another producer, not really DJ Herbie Lovebug Azor. Which mm-hmm. most of you don't necessarily know who he is now, but he's the one who brought you such acts like Salt and Pepper and Kim Play, Danny Dane. Interesting. And one of my favorites, Sweet Tea. Oh, I love Sweet Tea. Um, but, uh, um, they both were part of a, like a crew. Of a DJ and a and a and a rapper and an MC. The mm-hmm. MCs are kind of similar, like like marvelous MC marvelous. Kind of like Fresh Prince, aka Fresh Prince, aka Will Smith. Like they both kind of had this silly persona about them, where they would be joking it, cause like. Um, they made Cash Money Mar- um, Marvelous made that song that I sent you guys that time um, Find an Ugly Woman and Make Her Your Wife <laughs> Right <laughs> like, <laughs> they, they had like a lot of funny songs like that they were like the same kind of in the same kind of vein Cash Money and Marvelous had like silly songs like that just like like, um, like Jeff and Will did so what you think that what you think made uh Jazz and Will more popular? Charisma. I think that Will yep. Yep. I think that Will had more charisma. The MC yeah. Marvelous. Yeah, that makes sense. And the and the and the yeah. and the girl found him easy on the eyes, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah I be wondering that cause a lot of times like um if I'm like uh like listening to a lot of older stuff like I'll come across artists that like 
that sound that got like similar type of vibes as another artist. Like for example, like um Big Daddy Kane and uh uh Redhead Kingpin. Mm. So like yeah. if you come across people like you just like, well what made you know what I'm saying? Like what made this one stand out more so? Are you saying why did Redhead Kingpin stand didn't stand out as much as Big Daddy Kane? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really mean, like when you put it like that, but it's yeah, it, 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 I understand what he's getting at. I understand what he's getting at. Yeah, a lot of times, As like the person who was actually there, it's a, it, see when you guys say stuff like this, that that shit sounds weird <laughs> to me. Because yeah. it was like, because in my mind, I'm like, nobody would ever ask that question. Like, why did Redhead Kingpin not stand out like Big Daddy? What? Yeah, but, I mean. I mean, yeah, yeah, it, like, makes sense. it makes sense. It makes sense, though. Yeah, like yeah, a lot of times, sound. Sound. yeah, it's like similar stuff that you catch on to, and it's like, mm, that's, you know, that's kind of big. I mean, I guess you can like account it to like certain stuff. Like people were probably was looking at it like, oh, such and such biting, so <laughs> screw them. But it was, I mean, I mean, he, the two of them are very different outside of one of them being light skinned with freckles and red hair. And the other one being a dark. Well, for one thing, so Big Daddy is a fucking lyrical beast. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, Big Daddy had a swagger on him before we were calling it that. You know what I mean? Yeah. He he had a whole swagger about him that was that was very. You know, and then the the second thing. Sorry, the third thing, excuse me. Like, he had a lot of women that, like, Big Daddy was a woman magnet. Yeah. I mean, that's just, that's just, he was a lady that's man. One, that's just one example I'm giving, though. Like, it's, it's plenty of, like, you know, people we could, like, toss in that bracket where it's, like, um, like, I'm sure Mo D, like, you know, like, of, of course, like, biting is, like, you know, frowned upon, uh, of course, but, like, you you always had people that was trying to you know what I'm saying like copy the aesthetic or like you know perfect the aesthetic of what whoever else was doing so right. a lot of times you would have artists that got like similar style even though they were different and a lot of times those artists just didn't stand out for whatever reason so mm-hmm. well people liked Redhead King Pan he just you know he had a different tone yeah. You know, so what he did too, it was it, it wasn't the same. And you just people at the time during that time, as, as folks have pointed out before, people were very focused on MCs being lyrical, and not mm-hmm. lyrical in the sense that you know playlist academics would <laughs> would say, <laughs> but like actually being lyrical you know like your words joined together and your sentences made sense like remember those those things i sent you i can't think of that dude's name right now where he was he broke down um people's lyrics and their appeal like from the old school when he he and he did one on big daddy he did one on rocket like again like why did and Aaron and i were talking last friday but it's friday just passed like the difference between rock him and Cool G Rap. Like, why did Rock Him catch on and Cool G Rap? People liked him and a lot of guys, you know, and some women. Not most women are big fans of Cool G Rap. Well, of course. <laughs> you know, but I mean, what made... Because, I mean, they were both lyrically, you know, insane. Yeah. But what made Rakim, you know, you know what I think it was? get more shine than Cool G Rap? I, you already I think, know what I think it is. Yeah, I uh, think um, in most cases, oh, she don't like the list. Kane, no, Kane played, Kane, Kane people, played to his sexuality though. He did. Rakim not so much. Yeah, but at the same time, I like, didn't have he, a list. like. Both of them, both of them were, both of them, I think, were a lot smoother than G-Rap. Like, G-Rap, like, it on worked. top of the fact, on top of the fact that he had a list, like, a lot of times, if you listen to G-Rap, he a little redundant with his rhymes. Mm-hmm. He can be, 
but he's also like you just said he doesn't have the the appeal that's gonna carry over to everybody because he's not as smooth like and it, people take for granted your cadence they take for granted like the sound of your voice if I don't like the way that you flow plus I don't like how you flow and the way your voice sounds right Rakim's voice is like butter on a like a hot knife through some butter Mm -hmm. well yeah it's it's funny we having this conversation because like (laughs) that's not even a factor anymore for anyone I mean, well, no, because, you know, you just bring your friend auto tune in. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> and who gives a shit what your voice sounds like, right? Yeah, it, how about that? It can sound shitty as I don't know what. Nobody really gives a crap. Yeah, so Tap Money is still out there, too. Um, Tap Money is actually... The other DJ we were talking about, the one who used to be Kwame's DJ, he still mm-hmm. tours overseas. Like, they all do, though. Like, they're all still out there. DJ, um, Jazzy Jeff, like, we watched him on, what was that, Russian, on, on, um, Rhythm Roulette. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, they ever, they're all, they're all still out there doing their thing. They have I think he do like a monthly, he do like a monthly series, too, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, he always touring him and um, the boy, Dane Anthony, he out there touring around. Really. You know, they're still doing their thing. But, you know, I hope Aaron is right. I hope that resurgence, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the only the back. only way I can see it, the only way I can see it being prevalent is if, like, it catch on with the newer generation. Like, like I said, it's only the older generation that we see this happening with. Yeah. Um. So that's the show today. I think that was excellent, guys. I think we did the shit justice. Yep, yep. Except to us, we gotta do it. Nobody else will. I mean, in our way, I think we did. Cause I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there for you to see the origins. And the basis, but I think we kind of unpacked a lot of shit that people didn't necessarily understand why people were saying things they were saying, and you know yeah. what I mean? Like sometimes you see that shit, but if you don't understand any of it, you're not processing why. And I think we just kind of unpacked it and made you understand yeah. what, what's what, and why it is. So yeah, well that's another but reason why you got DJs still doing it out there. Do your thing yeah. and don't ever stop. I'm sorry, go ahead, Aaron. Oh no, I was saying um that's why we gotta like I feel like it's important like that we emphasize hip hop DJ because a lot of people like they just hear DJ and like you know they just you know yeah. wh- whoever the hell spinning a record <laughs> you know what I'm saying so. <laughs> well, that's why we started talking about the playlist wackademics and, <laughs> well, and he don't even dudes. he don't even spin records. <laughs> even but spin that's records. the issue. Like, like we unpacked that shit too because we talked about the two turntables. Like that shit that y'all have, where y'all got two things that look like turntables that don't have records on them. Yeah, mm. no. <laughs> I don't know what y'all doing. I don't know what that is. Playlist, it's an iTunes playlist. Yeah, what the hell is that? Like, I still don't, I still don't know how, like, what that machine does or how it works. Like, you don't need to know because your ass is gonna do shit the old school way. <laughs> do you really wanna know what that is? Seriously. Like, so, I be seeing a lot of people with them. So next week, um, for homework. Next week we're moving on to our second show for elements, and we're moving on to the second element, which is b boying slash breaking. And again, don't ever call it break dancing. <laughs> that shit is disrespectful. Like, like. Mad disrespectful. <laughs> well, popping and locking is part of. Yes, it is very much part of. You know that culture, but please don't get your 
ideas about breaking from breaking one or two electric boogaloo. <laughs> I mean, you can watch them. Them. <laughs> you, I love them both, and you can watch them. You can enjoy them. You can definitely, you know, don't discount that shit. Popping and locking is a part of b-boying as well. But you gotta admit, Aaron, there's way more popping and locking in both of those movies than actual breaking and b-boying. Yeah, true. Sure. Which we didn't notice until after that shit was... We were like, wait a minute. <laughs> that was the side so That's the part everybody likes about b-boying. For the pop lock. Well, people like the other shit. Too. Like, you know... Well, at that point... At that point... Well, no, I'm saying like the, like the stuff you saw in... um, More in Style Wars and Wild Style. Yeah. That was... More akin to what or two. So if you're gonna watch something, you know, next. Go week, put on put on some wild style. Go watch wild style. A little bit of Beat Street. A little Beat Street, wild style, Beat Street, Style Wars. Beat Street is much closer to the the actual culture than than breaking. And that's yeah. breaking one and two took place in like California. Yeah. Okay. I want I want to remind y'all of that too. Like there was, like, the the strength of the hip hop culture at that time was still taking place in New York, like in 1984. So that was somebody who kind of was like, oh yeah, let's Hollywoodize this shit. Mhm. Got to remember that. You know, so also you can read the book B Boy, a children's guide to the origins of hip hop. B five <laughs> element. Clark, I like I remember. The, I like the pictures in this show. Me too. And remember, it's a book for kids. But if you don't know shit about B boying, <laughs> that don't mean shit to you. <laughs> If you don't understand B-Boy, you need to start with an elementary hip-hop kitty book. <laughs> okay, so get down with that book and do your thing. Come back on the show next week. Tune in so you can hear us talk about the second element. Yep. Yeah. All right. Anybody got anything else? You want to unpack anything else today? Uh, let's talk about let's talk a little more about playlist by academic. <laughs> I'm really, good. Really, do we have to? We have to. You know, let's, talk about, let's talk about the stupid. Let's talk about the dick. let's talk about the deuce. Is that coming on tonight? It is coming on tonight. Of I fell asleep on it last week. I fell asleep on it last week. How could you? Cause I was tired. <laughs> 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 I like that drum. I like that drum so far. I do too, but that that actually reminds me of the DMP challenge, Aaron. Oh, oh my goodness! I'm so disappointed. Disappointed in humanity. <laughs> what are you disappointed you know, about, though? Yeah, me and Aaron are like, eh, it's just funny. I don't know. There's other stuff going on right now. Come on now. There is. I mean, but I, I think that's part like, of the reason but... why. I, I mean, you know what? Your hip hop is not listening you out of anything at this point. And then, and then Issa Rae, Issa Rae killed it. <laughs> and I were like, there were some cringeworthy parts to that shit. We were like, did yeah. you? Just... <laughs> oh, she man. said choo choo for the dick. She said choo choo for the dick, though. Uh, you yeah. brought your friend? You brought your friend? She was like, whoa. I was cracking up the part where she was like, uh, she said, I can't. She said, I can't do my. I can't do HBO for the dick. She said, oh, she, no, she, she said, bitch, not she no said, more for the dick. Like, no for the dick. That shit was fucking hilarious, that part. <laughs> she just proved uh, why, why she is. I think, I think that's, a, that's like, see. I think that's like the funnier aspect of it, like the ad-libbing that people be doing for each other. That right. shit had me cracking up. That, that shit is crazy. 
And then and then Erica Badu with Michael Blackson coming out of no fucking where that shit had me cracking. <laughs> up, <yo. laughs> Michael Black Michael Blackson a fool, yo. Yeah, a whole fucking fool. <laughs> no way. But nah. They all tripping because Erica did it because she's you know she's so woke. Mhm. Oh God, that shit annoys me. Like, why people got me pigeonholed to this whole idea of whatever they are? Like, but that's what that's what I was saying. Like, that's the whole joke behind it. Like, that's why I said it depends on who does it. Like, if it's somebody, if it's somebody that you don't really know what they about, like it's different when a cop does it. Like, if a cop does it and he's saying stuff that relates to what a cop does, and so that, that makes dude it was funny. not a cop though. That dude was actually was an actor. Mm-mm. Oh, he was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then why I kept why I was hearing that he was getting arrested? See, I gotta check my sources. Mm-hmm. So anyway, yeah, everybody, so he's an actor. So yeah, like that's what I was talking about. Like even when you was talking earlier, you was like, "Well, that's why I'm not a teacher anymore." But the funny, the funny thing about that is that if you were a teacher, it would be funny because of that. Like it's like this is a teacher. Yeah. You don't expect a teacher. You don't expect a teacher to say shit like that. So. But that, that's kind of my point about normalizing sex because. It shouldn't be shocking that sex. Oh my gosh, do you just have sex too? <laughs> but I'm just saying, part of, the issue, part of the issue is that everybody is so scandalized by people talking about the fact that they actually have sex. Like, oh my gosh, you have sex. You're scandalizing me. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean, I can It's the well. Part of it is the origin material too, because that reedy shit is whoa. Ironically <laughs> enough, I, I still I, I still didn't listen to that. Ironically enough, so I usually do that. So. Whoa. <laughs> I was like, first of all, if you look in the video, there's this large. There's this dude wearing a large black penis costume. Oh God. And it's it's anatomically correct, and all the girls and he his, and his face is like poking out of it, you know, and everybody's dancing around it and like all up on it and like it's just, but it's so offensive, it's comical. <laughs> like like but I mean it's it's ratchet as fuck though. I'm not saying it's not. It really is, but it's to the point of comedy. It it kind of reminds you of back that thing up, taken to like the tenth power. Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. By a woman. Mm mm mm. Cause she's gonna talk about you know. I do this for the dick. I do that for the dick. I do this for the dick. In her, in her um, New Orleans accent, it's funny. I'm telling you, I know exactly what's going on. Like people are, people are seeing people get paid off of this dumb shit, and they just like, you know what? Why am I sitting around here broke? <laughs> yep. just, yeah, like that's what's going on. Like we just like, yo, yeah. wanna lower the bar as far as we can and see what's going yep. hit. Uh huh. Yep. Mhm. And to actually hit, you got to do something like Anthony said. It's got to be salacious. Catch folks' attention very quickly. Yeah, and it's crazy because you like, I, I, it's it's always amazing to me how much worse it can get. Like, I, I just imagine like you know people are just like, <laughs> pe- I just imagine people are just numb to it now and they just like, oh, we've seen that before, we've heard that before. Like, but no, no, people always want rat. It's like it's like no, nah, make it more raunchy, more ratchet. Like, yep. It's like. From from Cardi B to however worse, how much worse you can get, like it's crazy. Well, Cardi B right now is she, and she hit, she hit records that other women didn't even hit. Lauren Hill. Except for Lauren, but see that that should take like again from Lauren to Cardi. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah, I just don't know. I, it's it's a it's amazing to me what people be checking for. Like I was listening to some um I was I was watching the Cardi video and like she was she was saying some shit in there and I was just like I'm thinking to myself like somebody wrote this for her. 
Cause it was like some clever shit that she was saying. I'm like, I feel like somebody wrote this shit for her, and it's like. Oh, I know she didn't write it. I'm, I, I don't. I don't believe she wrote that shit herself. Yeah, cause like what the joint I was listening to, like it was like a. St- it was, it was as far as like cleverness goes, it was much better than like what you hear on Bodak Yellow. And I was just like, why, like why are people feed into this, this dumb shit. <laughs> I'm like, I don't. I don't understand what people be checking for. Because, again, we've made it so that we are entertained by extremely low levels of things, by peekaboo. Yeah, apparently. I'm sorry, but my, my, my intellect is too far gone for that shit. I'm not entertained by Bodak Yellow. We are the rare few. Yep. And then, and then I recently found out that she got that shit from a, a Kodak Black song. I didn't even know that. I know that. Did she put Kodak Black on the remix? Yes, she did. Yeah, I didn't know that. All I, all I know, all I know is I woke up one day the song was popping. I'm just like, okay, like, <laughs> I'm like. I mean, do you want? I personally wouldn't. My first thing is, do I want some shit of mine associated with Kodak Black? Right. <laughs> but no. see, it's about that. It's about that check and that popularity. Like they ain't thinking about like what they're associated with. They ain't thinking about like. They you know don't have all any the other. Character. No one has any yeah. character, so they don't get. They don't give a shit. I would never do anything where Kodak Black would be associated with me in any way. And all it takes is a little bit of validation. Like I'm sure, like when she started rapping, like you know, what I'm saying it was people that was like backing her, like yo, you know, what I'm saying this thing right here, this could get the streets popping. And like once you get that validation, I don't know, I don't know about that. I think she, like, she was she was she was popping off Instagram or whatever, so she decided to start rapping. That's what I thought too. I, I don't think so. The reason I'm gonna tell you why is because like we've had females like that come out of like either the porn industry, the stripper world, or whatever the case may be, and they start rapping and niggas just be looking like, man, anybody trying to hear you? Like you know what I'm saying? So hey, I don't know. I think. I don't like, know. Um, Cardi had Cardi had a good follow. Uh, that that Heather Heather what's her name Heather Hunter I think. Um, you got her. Uh, what's the other chick name? Uh, Pinky. Pinky got an album. <laughs> Lola Lola Monroe. She another one. Um. You know what though? It, I'm gonna say something really crazy. Even with Pinky thrown in there, not ratchet enough. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess that's what it is. <laughs> and I mean, Little Kim's background is questionable. I don't know if I ever heard about what guys, what people have said in the industry has kind of like hush hush, but has said about what Little Kim was into before. Mm, she was yeah, a she was a wild girl, from what they say, but she can just spit. Right. I mean, if you can spit, you can spit. But, I mean, can Cardi be spit? Um, I, I mean, um, standards, I guess. The, depending on the song, depending on the song, I would say yeah. But that's why I said like I'm. I, it's obvious that somebody writing her shit. Like, is this, is this one song? Like, she was saying some stuff, and I'm just like. That's too clever for you. I'm like, like it was just like, it was one of them. It was so one of them, Yeah, it was one of them things. Like, you know, like don't get me wrong. Like, I talk about how I like Cardi B all the time, but it's not like I don't. I don't look to her as like, you know this. You know what yeah. I'm saying this. This. You know what I'm saying mind boggling lyrical genius or you know. And like, with that, Aaron, let me sign off the show. <laughs> um, <laughs> who is officially out Cardi B not a lyrical genius apparently oh, man. such a revelation 